So you, if you cannot pronounce my name, call me Q. So it's easier for you to approach me to start a, a discussion. Uh, my talk actually has two topics. One is related to the first talk, and the, the second one is related to second talk. So it's good that she switched me to this session. Um, so the work is actually done by um, Jana, who is my PhD student, and my collaborator, Bindong, at uh, Beijing University, and uh, his PhD student, uh, Yutong, and uh, Kwang. Kwang is also uh, in this uh, uh, conference. So the first one I want to talk about is how to estimate uh, the uncertainty of pet denoise. We had presented some work last workshop. We have done something new, which we make the estimation faster. That, that's the key that we are going to present. The second one is how to use the uh, diffusion model in pet imaging uh, enhancement. Uh, that is related to um, Webb's uh, presentation. It's great that uh, Webb have uh, put a lot of slides to introduce that uh, model. So when we start to think about uncertainties a long time ago, um, we, we didn't, uh, AI didn't even start it and uh, oscillation is not a keyword yet. So at that time, what we really not happy about is the, um, is the SUV. SUV gives you one value, but in most time, uh, it's not perfect. It, it doesn't count a lot of mathematical factors and biology factors. And also, what I think we can deal with is the, uh, it's also bury a lot of uh, random noise. So if your signal is smaller than the noise in a spectral image, using SUV, you cannot find the signal because it's buried. But if you can somehow characterize the uncertainty, use some mathematical skills, you can find that signal using uh, a signal processing method. So that's why we start to look at um, uh, the SUV is particularly useful in our day that when you think about spectral imaging, which has more noise and you want to look at the early treatment response of RPT, for example. So the, the approach that uh, we initially started is like um, based on some traditional method like feature, uh, feature information matrix that proposed by uh, Fessler a uh, long, long time ago. And or you can do Monte Carlo simulation uh, like um, Eric has done um, many years ago. And when deep learning start, like several years ago, this field becomes very uh, popular and there are a lot of work. Um, I, I cite some work over here, but in the last two years, this uh, there are more and more uh, publication along this topic. So the way that we are going to do is that it's very similar to, to, to um, what's put over here. We, we, we didn't use the latest method, yes. The latest method in, in computer vision is more advanced. So the method we use over here is uh, variation autoencoder. Basically in this method, you have like a autoencoder, but you estimate the distribution in the latent space then use that distribution to generate one sample, then goes through the decoder, you generate a distribution. And you do Monte Carlo uh, generation, so you get the, uh, a mean and variance and the full proper uh, uh, distribution function of your uh, image. Most uh, variational encoder doesn't work in the high resolution because uh, they use like the uh, ULAT kind of uh, structure and skip some high frequency uh, components. This work from NVIDIA in 2020 uh, changed this into hierarchical latent variable dependency. So the, the left work because more complicated, but you can really get high resolution image. That was the state of art for image uh, generation at that time. Then when, when we start to apply this to uh, imaging, uh, denoising, uh, then we start saying this, you have some uh, prior as a condition over here. So we, we, we make a conditional VAE version. So the key over here is that you have two um, part in the loss function. The first part is the uh, like, just likelihood term. The second part is that is a KL divergence between your prior and the posterior. So in our, when we uh, implement this, uh, it works well. But it takes so much time because when you do this, you estimate distribution. When you generate, you generate distribution in a way that do Monte Carlo simulation. In the meantime, I, I start to look at one uh, part of work that from my PhD advisor, 
Richard Lee, he was working on something to apply stati stable statistic to, um, to uh, deep learning. So one um, nice work they did is that they um, bring something called uh, um, uh, quantile regression into this. Quantile regression means that if you know your uh, statistical distribution, you can calculate each quantile and how it's related to different momentum of your distribution. So when you do this, for example, in this case, if we only want to learn the mean and the variance in this case, then we need to calculate mostly concentrate on two quantile. And then instead of generating the whole distribution, we use a quantile regression to, to generate the image. And we can, after we generate these two parameter image from quantile regression, we can directly calculate the mean and the variance from these two. And then we replace the previous data fitting um, loss function with this quantile regression loss function. And when you do this, particularly, uh, there is an advantage that you can avoid the variance shrinkage problem. When you use variation autoencoder, sometimes when you do the training, your variance actually shrink and you cannot continue uh, the, the, the training. So this is a known problem. Uh, so that you why that's you have the, this uh, temperature uh, parameters and is usually very tricky to adjust this parameter. So to do this, you avoid um, variance shrinkage problem, and it is accelerate the computation. You can still do Monte Carlo simula simulation to get a better quantile regression, but our result shows that you do few quantile. A calculation and you do five or 600 Monte Carlo, the result is also similar so that you can do few and you save a lot of time. So here shows that uh, on the top, it shows only for like few uh, patients. Data shows that um, uh, the PSNR and the structure similarity and in the bottom shows the image. The image is quite noisy. And if you look at uh, the result you get from quantum, um, regression is quite nice. And if you look at uh, uh, the details, it gives you more um, contrast. I think what matters also previously uh, when we present the last time, uh, when we use VNAE to do uh, Monte Carlo simulation to get the full distribution, it takes us uh, 35 minutes and now it takes four seconds. So then make this method more practical uh, useful in, in clinics. So the other thing that is interesting, my 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 previous motivation is that when I, I get an image from AI system, I really want to avoid the artificial lesion or something they call it oscillation out there. And when we present uh, a lot of the results to, to observer study, and this was picked up by our radiologists, like artificial lesions, that, that is like the dead end. So one way we were thinking is that when you provide your uncertainty, usually is based on our limited experiment right now, is that there's a suspicious lesion, the variance over there is always quite high. So combine those two, you make it easier for the radiologist to call what's wrong. So for example, th this is the result on the top right, the one eight dose supervised that's the, uh, one of the initial observer study, one of the results we sent to the radiology and they pick up this suspicious area and uh, ask us to particularly go back to check what's really happened, whether there's a tumor over there. Uh, later on, of course, use this, if you do this, um, this type of anti-noising, even in the mean image, you can clearly see that it's less suspicious. And if you look at the variance, you see that in the boundary, the variance is high, particularly over here. At that time, we were suspicious there are some motion or something related to alternation cause this uh, artifact that is becomes very noisy in one age. Those images, then it becomes even more severe in the supervised images. So we, we are still continue to do more clinical study and I hope that will bring one way to explain the AI result and they help to reduce the oscillation and build the trust from radiologists on our uh, AI generated results. So th that's one part of the work uh, that I want to uh, present. The other part is related to um, the diffusion model. So 
the generative diffusion model becomes a, a very powerful uh, computer vision to us, right? In, in computer vision, if you look at a number of publication related to this, it's like increased very fast. Even commercial software start to use a lot of these um, techniques to generate images. And in medical domain, people start to use this for imaging uh, synthesis and, uh, and also image enhancement. You can see it a lot in other uh, domain. I noticed in the audience, some of you already have publication on archive on these topics. Uh, so we're not going to be talking about that. Um, so I, I just want to give you like uh, some of our experience and one of the work that we do, right? So when we start to apply uh, this to uh, imaging, uh, medical imaging, it doesn't work. You, you face a lot of problems. Um, so we have some experience, like we, we used uh, um, uh, this to do uh, MR uh, uh, reconstruction and uh, uh, the um, uh, and the sample the, uh, data. It, that's why it works actually reasonably well. But when we start to use it to nuclear medicine imaging, uh, including PET spect, CT probably will work better <laughs> than PET and spect, and it doesn't work that well. There, there are a lot of challenges. So we we look at uh, we start look at the mathematics and then. We uh, have some work on like if your uh, noise is not Gaussian, look at all this paper. They're mostly working on Gaussian. So if your noise is not Gaussian, what what would you do, right? Poisson noise, gamma noise. Um, this is one. The second one, if your noise that has some correlation inside it, right? If it's added noise plus a uh, 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 multiplied noise, what are you going to do? So for for the complex case, we, 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 we developed the mathematics, but at the meantime, um, Quang has already uh, made a lot of effort to apply this to uh, pad imaging uh, and denoising and get quite uh, good results. This, this is a long press. You can talk to Quang, he's in the audience. He probably can tell you a lot of painful experience uh, when you try to apply this method to, uh, to uh, denoising. So I'm going to... Uh, Go, go through, uh, skip some of the details. Basically, uh, like uh, Webb has said that you have to, one PDE goes to uh, diffusion process, and one PDE guides um, the reverse process. And during this, this process, you can actually bring some patient's information into the reverse process. And when you do this, you, you can do it like ad hoc way, you just do it. Or you can write down the, the, the mathematic equation, and you, you can see there is additional data consistent terms that you can add to the loss. So based on this, then you can develop different methods. And you can do this for uh, pet uh, denoising. Here is one result. Uh, this shows the low dose, the low dose, uh, nanokumi. I really like nanokumi, the UNET method. Uh, DDPM uh, with noise pad as prime. DD, uh, DDPM use both um, pad and MR and MR. And if you add the data consistent, uh, say, con condition, you can see that this one gives you the best result. Okay. And if you look at uh, uh, PSNR um, for different brain region, you consistently get a better result, uh, particularly when you add uh, both noise. PET images and MR as, um, as a prior into uh, the, the reverse process and you add data consistency um, terms. So the paper is online. If you want to see more mathematical detail, you can go to see this paper. And here shows also if you do it uh, for simulation and you, you quantify it, uh, the variance, you can see that this one can really reduce the variance. I think that that's the most uh, important part. And for this one, again, let, let's say one big problem of uh, this uh, division model is that it's very computationally expensive. You need estimate the score function and the estimate score function is, is, is really time uh, consuming. So the um, one work is that really worth of thinking um, in, in one of the slides that the web shows that, that uh, uh, borrowed from the original image, you see they have plot the PDE. They also have ray nine shows the ODE. So all this PDE can be approximated by ODE. And ODE, there are a huge amount of literature 
shows like fast ODE solver. So this can be borrowed to speed up all the computation. That's right now the, 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 the hot topic in uh, computer vision. Every month there are different methods that come up online about how to use uh, ODE solver to speed up this diffusion process. Um, at the last slide, this is my uh, uh, contact information. So come to talk to me uh, during the coffee break. So nice work, Chen Zhen. Yeah, so just one quick comment for you. Two part of work actually is not separated. It's not precisely the same <laughs> talk because the variational encode decode is precisely the stand score learning process. Yeah. The old days just you speak fat one single step ambitious, yeah. you know, score learning. And nowadays just divide into many small steps. That is the diffusion model. So that is what's just one comment for you. Yeah. Mathematically, they are quite different though. No, 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 no. Mathematically, precisely the same. I can tell you. I can prove that for you. <laughs> <laughs> we will have more discussion on this. Yeah, cut some questions on the chat. One second, we'll take that and then we'll come to you. So if you can just take a look here. Jin Song, what's the uncertainty you are dealing with? Uh, uncertainty in the training data, the prior, we, we, are, we, are, we are dealing with the, uh, the, the uncertainty on the output of the denoisy. That's the most related model. And how do you validate uncertainty? Mm? Take it. Okay. Uh, what is the loss function when you train your diffusion uh, diffusion network? Uh, so the, the diffusion network, there are several training parts. Uh, uh, the, the score function is one that, that's the that's used a new network to train, and the rest is you you basically follow the um, the the uh, reverse uh, process and um, calculate it. Okay. Yeah, really great work. A uh, quick question about the diffusion model in general. So I was under the impression that uh, the, sto the stochastic process needs to follow like a normal distribution when you are doing this diffusion process. But yeah. uh, when you are denoising like PET image or even CT, they don't really follow a normal distribution. So are there any limitations in performance? Yeah. What is the cost? Yes, okay. yes. So that, 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 that's a very good question. So um, uh, right now, uh, when people, most people, uh, apply this to medical image analysis, they assume Gaussian noise, assume Gaussian noise, which is not right, right? And that's why you see in some region, you will see problem, particularly the bias uh, will appear. So that, that's why in, in the other work that we, we put online, we, that we, we start uh, give assumption that what if your, um, your noise is not Gaussian noise, it's, it's personal noise, gamma noise, or speckle noise for for, uh, for ultrasound. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs>